Welcome everybody to our Open Ed 20 community meeting. Um, it is October 16th, which means this is our last meeting before the conference. So exciting and so thrilling, <laughs> but also a little bit scary for some of us uh, in plan planning and, and working on the back end of things. Um, my name is Spencer and I am part of the steering committee and just wanted to welcome everybody back and remind you of some of the other folks involved, um, here's the steering committee and some, some photos of fresh faces. And here's the agenda for today. So you'll see uh, we're kind of following a similar format that we have for past meetings. For those of you who have attended previous meetings. And we are going to be using Menti again today which is a tool, an online tool that we've been using to gain feedback um, during these meetings. And so if you go to menti.com, you can use the code 79026500, or we have a QR code that's up on the screen currently. And um, normally we recommend using another device or maybe another browser a uh, separate browser so that you can kind of stay in this presentation, the Zoom call, but also respond to the polls that we have coming through on Menti. So just throw something in the chat if you have any issues using Menti and we'd be happy to guide you through those next steps. And as usual, we'd like to kind of kick off with, um, we have a bit more intimate group today, but we'd like to learn where you all are joining us from today. So if you could enter your US state, Canadian province, or the country that you're joining us from. We'll get a feel for using Menti and we'll get a feel for where folks are coming from today. And here come those results. Awesome, looks like California's taking center stage today. We also have Edmonton, Alberta, Canada in the house, Texas, BC. I see USA on there a couple of times. That's great. I haven't put in Colorado, but I'm going to. Great. And so I think now we're going to shift into conference updates. And for that, um, I'll turn it over to Daniel. Hey, thanks so much, Spencer. It's great to see all the people joining, although not as many. I'm sure everybody's busy. I think this week is actually midterms for a lot of schools, so it makes a lot of sense that we don't have quite as many people here this week. But we do have really exciting operational updates. Um, by now, I'm sure everybody knows that the conference is November 9th through 13th. It will be virtual this year. Um, so we'll see you right back here on Zoom in about a month, which is really fantastic. Um, I also wanted to give a quick sponsorship update. So um, we were able to secure foundation support to underwrite the conference um, this year. Um, as we've said over and over again, our goal is to keep this conference as affordable as possible. And this support from the Hewlett Foundation, as well as the 20 Million Minds Foundation, uh, has made that possible. Um, it also allowed us to defer uh, a decision on whether or not we should allow sponsorship from companies this year. Um, this has been a, you know, a point where I think we need to clarify our community's values and take time to figure out um, if and how we might allow companies to sponsor an open education conference in the future. Um, so one of the things that we'll be looking at this year at the Open Ed Conference is what the future of Open Ed looks like. And hopefully one of the areas we can uh, dig in a bit on is sponsorship. But the good news is this year, we don't have to worry about that. Um, we are underwritten by Hewlett and uh, the 20 Million Minds Foundation, so that's fantastic. Um, registration, the registration rate we landed at was $75 for a five-day conference, which is, uh, I hope, very affordable. And we've also made generous um, allotments for students, so $25 for students. And we've also we also have um, scholarships available. So just a quick update on where we are right now with registration. Uh, we have over 500 registrants already. 
Um, we've also received 46 scholarships uh, requests. Uh, and thankfully, we were able to fulfill every single one of those scholarship requests, which is really, really great. Uh, and we still have about a month until the conference. So keep encouraging your friends, make sure that you have signed up and registered for the conference. Uh, and that'd be great if we could even see that surpass the, the attendeeship for last year's conference. Um, so everybody, you're our marketing team. Get out there, ask all your friends, and I'll see you back here in about a um, in about a month. Thanks so much. And then I think I'm up to give a program update. So we're really excited that we have the program available. And I think we're gonna be able to throw a link. Thank you, Lee, in the chat. So this is gonna go out on social media today and by email shortly, either today or on Monday. Uh, but we have over 150 live sessions. We have over 100 asynchronous sessions, which are the lightning talks and the showcase galleries. And we're also very excited to announce our first keynote, Maha Bali and Mia Zamora are going to have an interactive discussion around how we can promote equity in the online uh, environment. So promoting equitable online communities. So we're super excited and there's gonna be more keynote announcements to come. And I just, um, a big thanks to the program team that's done a lot of heavy lifting, getting all of the proposals reviewed and getting this all put together. A big shout out to the Spark team. And um, yeah, everyone who's had a chance to look at the program and the schedule is so excited for this conference to happen. So I hope as you get a chance to check it out, this just increases your motivation and your excitement about the conference. And again, uh, maybe it will help drive some more registration, even though we have a very healthy number of folks registered as it is. So let's see, I think I get to pass this off now to Tiffany. Yeah. Um, okay, so accessibility update for the conference. Um, first, we will have closed captioning in all sessions. Um, right now, we are planning on um, trying to do as many sessions with live human captioning as possible, and then we'll supplement with automatic captioning. Um, and we're also looking at ASL interpretation for people who have asked for it. Um, so it won't necessarily be in every session. It'll be more on a case-by-case -case kind of basis, but we're still in talks about that. And then, um, on the speaker resources page, um, there is um, lots of new resources. So we have uh, tutorials for getting captions on videos. Um, we have tutorials for doing um, accessible presentations and accessible documents um, to go with your presentation materials. And so uh, we really encourage you to go and look at those if you need help with accessibility. Um, and any, honestly, even if you already feel really comfortable with it, it might be a good idea. You might find something easier there. Um, right now, the tutorials are uh, geared more towards Microsoft products, but we are in progress on some Google options as well. So um, keep an eye out for those. That's it. Oh, let me pass it to Nicole. Sorry. <laughs> Wonderful. Thanks, Stephanie. Uh, yeah, accessibility is one of the very clear priorities that the early input from the community uh, really uh, impressed on us as being important. So uh, that piece of it is something that we've prioritized and, um, you know, made sure to include adequate budget in order to support it. So and thank you to Tiffany for leading that process. So uh, we, uh, since this is our last meeting before the conference, uh, we wanted to just take a little bit of a, a minute to gather some overarching feedback and then ask a couple questions about the conference experience uh, itself to gather input on. Uh, so if you're in Mentee, there's gonna be, uh, I think, four questions. Uh, feel free to also expand in the chat on anything that, that we're asking. Uh, but the first question is just sort of an honest, how, how are we doing? <laughs> How's it going? Um, do you think that the organizing process has been going well? 
uh, what are some of the things that that can be going better? Uh, you know, Menti is pretty much anonymous, so feel free to put stuff there uh, or in the chat. And I know that we have a lot of members of the planning teams in the uh, in the session. So <laughs> this question is also sort of a how are how are we doing inclusive of you as well? Uh, so I think, um, you know, just thinking back to where we started, I, I mean, really, we started doing this work in January where our biggest focus was, can we find a venue to, to hold 800 people uh, uh, on such short notice? And uh, after solving that challenge, uh, we, uh, like everybody else, were surprised by the pandemic and had to adapt to that and uh, over the summer, some of the uncertainty around that. Uh, and now we're sort of staring down the last few weeks here. So uh, I think what's, just speaking personally, I think what's been just almost overwhelming to me is the, ex the level of enthusiasm and commitment from the community and the willingness to, to step up and do hard work and, and put in the hours to think these things through and, you know, attend Zoom meetings or, you know, review lots of proposals. And, uh, you know, we were just trying to calculate the review process itself included over 300 hours of work. Um, so it's, it's really amazing how many people have stepped up to be part of this. So, uh, I'm seeing some really nice comments in here. Thank you uh, uh, from from me and the Spark team. Uh, anybody else want to jump in and share anything? Anyone anyone want to unmute and say anything? Well, we seem to have a question about karaoke. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the logistics of that are really challenging because of the delays. <laughs> uh, but it's going to happen. We're, we're going to find a way. And of course, there's always a question about karaoke. All right. Well, yeah, definitely the RFP could have gone out sooner, <laughs> for sure. All right. We'll bump up karaoke on the list of the priorities. Well organized. Yeah, thanks for the thanks for the positive feedback. It's been really awesome uh, working with you all. All right, we shall move on, but uh, this will stay open for a while. We'll turn it on uh, manual. So if you want to come back and add anything else, please feel free to do so. Okay, so a couple of logistical questions about the conference platform. Uh, we uh, have asked speakers to, uh, speakers who are going to be presenting scheduled sessions, so either 25 minute presentations or 55 minute uh, panels or interactive sessions. Uh, what's most important in terms of the features? of the, the, how you experience those sessions. Uh, we've noticed that presenters are sort of gravitating toward just presenting in a Zoom meeting like this uh, and just wanna get a sense of like, how important is chat? How important is the ability to ask questions live? Uh, how, do you just wanna listen and watch the presentation? What's, what's important at a virtual conference? Any feedback here would be very helpful. All right. Oh, all right. A few people sharing. Thanks. All right. Yeah, I, I guess listening and watching the presentation is important. <laughs> um, okay, so moving on to the next question. Uh, we are, are talking through what the social spaces for the conference might look like. And, you know, obviously part of the magic of an in-person conference is the serendipity. And, and we actually saw that word pop up a lot in the early feedback through, and, and sort of consistently throughout 
the organizing process, uh, just the the desire to to have those those uh, uh, coincidental opportunities to talk to people you wouldn't otherwise get to connect with, catch up with old friends, uh, especially in these environments. So. Uh, we put a couple of platforms in here. So, uh, you know, obviously a, a lot of the community is in Twitter, but not everybody is. Uh, you know, there's some work we can do around Twitter to help make that piece of it feel more engaged. Uh, so Discord is uh, a platform that, that we've been talking about this week. It's uh, new to me but it's for uh, often used by like gamers and, and some conferences have been organized out of there. It's, it's sort of a, a Slack-like, I would say. You can have voice and text channels and uh, just sort of check out who's in there or meet in groups and uh, have uh, live conversations by voice or video, uh, either privately or uh, within a channel. Uh, so, um, uh, having open Zoom rooms where, uh, like a virtual hallway Zoom room where, where you can drop in and see who's there and maybe get kicked out to a breakout room. Uh, it, you know, quiet, <laughs> quiet Zoom rooms if you just want to come and, and chat with other people and not talk. Um, just, you know, having, having spaces that you can enter and experience that sort of serendipity type experiences. And then finally, the idea of having, you know, a central uh, hub where everything is connected and, and feeling like everybody is in the same like platform and space during the conference, even if there isn't a direct interaction in that space. Uh, so uh, just it, I, I think the distribution or the averages here may be less interesting than the distribution. So thanks for this feedback. Really appreciate it. Uh, all right, so I think we have one more question, and it's about, what is it about? Expectations. So, uh, just wanted to ask another open question about uh, general expectations for the conference. What are your, <laughs> what do you think it's going to be like? Uh, what do you hope it's like? What are your hopes and dreams? Learning about trends, learning a lot, this is great. Inspiration, diversity and in thought, voice, approach, medium, love that. Care more, less about the sessions and more about the serendipity. It will be like grad school. Interesting, interesting. Opportunities to network. Well, thanks. Networking, strategies for o uh, OER addressing COVID challenges. There's uh, an entire uh, topic around that. Networking again, lots of takeaways, space to connect and learn. Great. Opportunities for collaborations, variety. Someone thinks that the virtual platform will, will be even more conducive to learning. Love that, excited about that. Seeing friends and colleagues, yay. Okay, I think we'll move on. Uh, all right, so, you know, again, this will be, this will be open later. Uh, I am going to turn it over here to Andrea and members of the Future of Open Ed planning team. Thank you, Nicole. Um, I'm Andrea Scott, and as Nicole mentioned, I'm here with other members of the Future of Planning um, Open Ed Planning team. Um, our team is responsible for envisioning the Open Ed Conference beyond 2020. Um, so one of the one of the things we've been working on um, with the Future of Open Ed team is looking at different ways that we can 
um, gather community feedback regarding um, the strategic planning process uh, for the future of open ed beyond the 2020 conference. Um, one of the methods we discussed is holding a plenary session on Friday at the conference, November 13th, um, for the purpose of gathering information from the community. Uh, so what we would like to do now is gather some feedback from you. Um, and we have a couple questions that we would like to ask you. Um, we are going to break out into sessions, different uh, rooms, and the open uh, team will be, the future of open ed team will be um, facilitating these discussions. And the two questions we, will, we would like to ask you are, one, how can we best use the Friday, Friday plenary time to get community feedback? And two, what types of questions should we be asking during uh, the plenary time? So I would just like to remind you of um, the breakup room questions uh, first or structure, introduce yourself quickly. Um, what, income, it, what input can we put together at the conference to inform um, the long-term strategic planning process? And what questions can we, can we be asking? So, and then if we can move on next um, to the next slide. Um, and so some of the breakout ground rules, I'd like to remind you when we're in these breakout sessions, um, if you tend to speak up a lot, make space for others, listen actively, um, take time to repeat back and clarify language and help make others look brilliant. And so I'd like to too, if, I, if I've left anything off, we, we've got some people on the call from the Future of Open Ed team. So if you'd like to jump in, if there's anything that I left off that you'd like to say, you're more than welcome to jump in here. <laughs> Other than that, we'll go ahead and head to um, the breakout rooms. All right, so uh, people are swapping out. So I'm just trying to stick people back in the rooms. Uh, all right, so uh, facilitators should know who they are. Like it looks like mostly everybody's back now. So we can go ahead and get started on um, touching in with the, the different mm -hmm. facilitators. So who would like to go first? How about Lee? I'm gonna call on you. That sounds good. So um, I'm just going to kind of summarize some topics um, that were kind of discussed. So uh, possibility of, you know, ideas of, of moving online and asking some questions around how did that specifically go, just in case that would be something that would um, need to be continued. Um, and, uh, you know, there's obviously the option of having an online component, if, even if we are face to face. Um, Asking questions about scheduling, um, following up with another conference where we're, we're really close to another open ed conference. Um, they, they mentioned that uh, the community calls have been really, really helpful and very transparent. So modeling that within this plan, plenary um, type of thing is in Mentimeter, where there's options to have a lot of voice. That's not only, you know, an opportunity to show honesty, but anonymity to give honest feedback. Um, and then also the... Um, you know, how can we continue the conversations after the conference? Um, so those are some of the highlights from, from our group. Okay, great. Thank you, Lee. Sounds like some great ideas there. Okay, um, Spencer, why don't you go ahead and, and jump in next? Absolutely. So there might be a little bit of overlap, but I'll quickly cover what our group talked about. Um, so on the first question, we talked a little bit about what are we hoping to get out of that session? And that might help us to guide that approach. Um, Menti, again, was, uh, was mentioned as a really great tool that has been successful in these community calls and just wondering if that can be scaled up to a larger group. And I've used it at, at large conversations for keynote type, I'm sorry, for keynote type conversations. And so I think that it was a successful tool, but that was my personal experience. Um, and then there was a recommendation that's been kind of modeled at some of the, the regional statewide conferences of an informal conversation to debrief the conference. Can we like embrace that type of spirit? And then there was a recommendation of another tool called Remo, which is essentially breakout tables that you can kind of drift in between. So maybe uh, for the group to look into that. Um, and then the second, on the second question, one big kind of overarching question that our group came up with, which was good in response to that question, a question for the question, 
um, was whose voices did we hear from during the conference? That might be good for us to learn a little bit more about, you know, um, assessing, let me see here, assessing the content or the sessions. Um, and then, you know, if we think about who is leading that session, that might also help us in answering the questions. And then there was, um, last suggestion here was like, assessing the content or sessions and understand actionable ideas for their work. In other words, can you help kind of the attendees reflect on their experience and then think about actionable ways forward? Okay, great. Thank you, Spencer. Um, Ethan, why don't we have you, your group to go next? Yes, um, I had, my group had a very productive conversation. Um, so I just want to thank them for all of these awesome ideas. Um, we basically, I think we kind of split our thinking into two pieces. One is the how and one about the what. So on the how we collect feedback, we talked about how it's important to get feedback in a variety of formats. Um, we talked about some ways to offer uh, graphic and visual opportunities to, to, for people to give input. Um, and also not just not just about the big picture of the conference and the community, but about the content and and creating channels for people to give feedback about sessions and quick thoughts just to help inform the presenters. Um, on the what, we sort of uh, focused in on two different pieces, the governance and the funding. And so the things that we wanted to ask are, uh, on governance, like what level do people want to participate? What are they comfortable with? How, you know, what's necessary to make sure they feel their voice is heard? Um, but then also, like, how do you maintain trust with uh, leadership and, and the community, right? Like there has to be some sort of steering committee or guiding body. Um, so how do you build trust there? And then on funding, we talked about um, like what might a membership model look like? How do you make sure that something like that is equitable? Um, and how do you sort of weigh the competing interests of, of funding needs and wanting to center the community versus sponsors or, uh, or other folks? Okay, great. Sounds like a lot of excellent feedback there. So I will go ahead and go next uh, with my group. Um, so thank you to my team um, that um, took some time to, to talk about this um, in hopes of with time, I'm, I'm going to only touch on a few items because I, I hear that mentees mentioned several times. Um, so one of the ideas that our team came up with was to make sure that we're offering multiple ways for conference goers to provide feedback. Um, we could do a traditional survey um, but also um, one of the ideas that, that came up that I really liked is, have we thought of an idea of maybe letting um, conference goers have a few days to digest the information? Um, so maybe delaying a survey after the conference, um, that, was, that was an idea that came up. Um, regarding um, the questions, um, we had some open-ended questions that we thought might be um, helpful. Um, how are people feeling about some of the, the ones we came up with is what do you want to see for next year or the coming the years to come? What worked well, what did not? Um, are you on board with a hybrid conference? Um, and what would you like to see in the future? Um, one other question was how are we doing with um, equity, diversity, and inclusion? And one point I wanted to make that someone brought up is uh, if we can possibly form questions that are in a positive light rather than um, uh, negative, that might be helpful as well. Um, and then one other idea, sorry, I'm checking my, my watch, um, is maybe is there some way we can fold in the feedback during a social hour? So that was another um, great idea that came up with, with our group. So I think that about summarizes it. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Haley now. I think you're the last group, Haley. Sure, yeah. Um, I'll be super quick. Our, our biggest takeaway was um, we just kind of talked about, you know, what were some of the things that people really like about having the conference online this year? What are some of the benefits and how can we carry that over into future years um, in a hybrid model? So, so for example, we talked about um, 
the ability for people to, you know, be engaged while still being at work, to be able to save money on travel costs, which are, you know, going to be, even if we are able to travel next year to a conference, um, will that be feasible um, for participants? And, and, you know, is that going to be available in professional development funding? So that was a question we considered, how can we take the positive aspects of the online conference and, and move it into a hybrid model for future years? How can we also use that to engage new voices um, in the movement? For example, I know there's a lot of um, uh, uh, like student interest in coming in to see what this is because it's more accessible financially um, and uh, simply in terms of time, not having to travel. So that is, that is really great. Um, we also chatted about um, just ways of collecting uh, feedback from the community. So um, strong support for like a survey method so people can sit um, and kind of think about their thoughts afterwards um, give us feedback that way whether that's you know one survey at the end of the conference or you know one at the end of each day kind of depending on what people have the capacity for and, and how they want to give their feedback I think um, it'll be important to have sort of a, um, a, a dialogue session as well to really get people's minds going but um, you know how can we um, welcome feedback in as many, um, I guess, sort of forums as possible. So those that was kind of the, the stuff that we touched on. Okay, great. I think we we got all the groups now. If not, speak up if we didn't, if we missed a group, we got all the groups. Okay, perfect. Great. So I'm now going to turn the time over to Lee. All right. Um, Nicole, are we ready to wrap up? Or do we have any other points we need to mention? Uh, yeah, I guess just if, if people have additional thoughts, you know, again, we have the open question here. I see that there are, uh, are a couple of other notes that people made during the conversation. Uh, but if we want to move on, we can. Okay, awesome. So thank you everybody for joining us. Um, please make sure that you do join us on social media. Um, all of those are right there. So anything that you follow, um, follow us. And um, please register. If you have not registered yet, please make sure that you go do that. Um, if, if anybody is in, uh, in, interested in scholarships and that's something you guys need, we're still looking at scholarships and, and taking applications. Um, and thanks for attending this last this last meeting. This is the last community call before our before the conference, and um, and we'll see you at the conference, open twenty. Oh or open twenty. Open it. There we go. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. We can do thanks, it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. 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 Can't wait.